Hi everybody, welcome to another video of what's moving the markets. So this is a very interesting video because the Fed has finally cut um, the interest rate, much anticipated, and it has been a 50 basis point cut. So if you watch the previous video, we were deliberating whether it's going to be a 25 basis point or a 50 basis point cut, and it has been a 50. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the market volatility that followed the cut, how the market responded to it. We're going to get a deeper look into the market response in terms of sector wise analysis that which sectors went up, which sectors went down. And I think it's very important that in this video, towards the end, we're going to talk about the developing geopolitical risks and how portfolios should consider positioning themselves. Of course, this is a casual series, not investment advice, so you have to do your due diligence before taking investment actions. So we'll be analyzing the central bank decision and market moves and of course we'll be talking about inflation especially with respect to the geopolitical risks all right so the federal reserve cut the interest rates by 50 basis point and not just is this the first cut in a number of years but it's a big cut so the last time we had such big cuts of 50 basis points was in 2001 and 2007 but the concerning point is that both those times when the Federal Reserve cut in such a big way, we had massive recessions, right? So you can see this is 2001 and then this is 2007. You had huge recessions and obviously the stock market didn't perform very well during those times. So what we're worried right now is that is the, a similar situation going to happen? Now, I don't think that in our current financial market, we are facing similar stress that we did back then, right? So the current cut occurs without evident financial market stress. And I'm going to show you how I am, why I'm so confident when I say that this is not the same as 2001 and 2007. And the basis of my confidence is what the market has done since the cut. It was a mixed reaction, right? And it came in phases. So first, as soon as the announcement was made, the market went up. So initially, the market immediately went up, but then it closed lower on the day of the announcement. But the next day, it hit an all-time high. So investors... And the big, big market players, they took time to absorb this information in the sense that there was a knee-jerk reaction immediately. But then what they realized was that both these times, the interest rates were not just de decreased in a big way, they've kept on decreasing. I mean, if you look at the reduction trend, it was so fast which is not what we're expecting right now. So the real focus is on this projection that going forward, are we looking to reduce like this or are we going to reduce? Is the easing going to be much slower? And the answer is the easing is projected to be much slower. So if you look at these projections, what you can see is that we're not going for such a similar easing that was there in 2001 and 2007 where we saw rapid rate cuts so it wasn't only the big 50 basis points that they started with which is obviously common with what we have now but then after that it wasn't uh, a, a, a ease a slow easing but a very very rapid uh, easing which is not what we're expecting right now and the reason for that is that in 2001 and 2007, we, we were facing the dot-com bubble burst and the, obviously the global financial crisis. And right now, the economy is not that bad. 
So, how can I be so sure? Because, number one, the financial sector still did pretty well, right? So, if the market is buying bank stocks, they feel the interest rates are not going to go down that fast, right? There is easing, but it's a slower projected pace of easing, which means the economy is pretty good, right? Plus, if you look at what happened in the defensive sectors, your consumer staples, which is a defensive sector, experienced a decline. So the market moved out of safe stocks and moved into riskier stocks. So you can see that there's a shift towards riskier assets. Now, somebody could say that Utilities is a safe stock. It's still going up. Well, yeah, if you've watched our previous videos, we have been telling you that utilities are going up for a completely separate reason because of uh, chat GPT and similar AI applications, which obviously need data centers to deliver a lot more uptime. And those data centers obviously need electricity. So utility companies have seen this surge in revenue and profits which again reconfirms our point that the economy is actually stronger than it was in 2001 and 2007 see the whole point is if you look at the industrial revolutions the four industrial revolutions the third one was uh, much before the dot-com bubble burst and, and the global financial crisis. So this part, these past, uh, let's say, from 2000 to 2024, 24 years, the fourth industrial revolution has just literally now started kicking in. I mean, we're really starting to see dividends from the fourth industrial revolution in terms of increase in productivity now with, with chat GPT uh, a type revolutionary products coming in. So I, I definitely see that the market is appreciating that. You can see that with the utility sector going up and the market is buying into the slow easing. So it is reconfirming the slower projected pace of easing. And you can see that by the financial sector going up. Um, but it's not all very it's not a very rosy picture and the the reason why i'm worried a little bit is because of what's going on in the energy sector now i told you last time that if the federal reserve cuts 50 basis points i would increase exposure to stocks but what has happened in this past week is yes the fed has uh, reduced 50 basis points but the other thing that is happening is the escalation in the middle eastern conflict and that is really a cause of concern because oil price could spike, right? And you can see that in the best performing sector this week, energy, because oil prices are going up. And obviously, that is a major point of concern for me, for all of us. And the, why is that? See, I mean, you have to understand if this thing escalates, which it clearly is escalating now. So production could get impacted oil production which obviously could lead to a much higher oil price which then would bring inflation back on the card so the fed has only started to ease because they feel that long-term inflation projections are anchored and it's it's around two percent so they are now starting to ease but if this escalation keeps happening in the middle east then obviously oil price will keep going up which means inflation could be back on the cards. And if that happens, well, this easing could stop, right? You, central banks could adjust their monetary policy, which then means you might have elevated rates plus uncertainty, which is going to be bad for equities, especially energy incentive, uh, energy intensive industries, which need oil, right? Um, plus, again, overall equities could face pressure but obviously the ones facing the most pressure could be airline shipping and other energy intensive industries so what could you do to to protect against this obviously gold is one way to go um and even though previously we did say that if there is a 50 basis point cut we could go for a much bigger exposure in stocks 
But while that has happened, the 50 basis point cut has happened, but the Middle Eastern conflict has escalated uh, over this past week as well. So um, considering a stronger allocation to gold is definitely something that could be a wise thing to do. Right. So again, let's conclude with the 50 basis point cut. Yes, the uh, future easing is projected to be slow, which is encouraging, but this is subject to low inflation, right? And, and, and that low inflation could not be the reality. Inflation risk could rise if the Middle Eastern tension escalates, uh, which then uh, means uh, you might, uh, it might be wide, wise to uh, hedge against this using gold. Plus, I think in both scenarios, whether the escalation is there or it's not there. So let's say it's not there and you do go for your uh, slow easing. Well, then rates will be pretty much decently high. So your financials will be good. And if there is escalation, um, then your energy sector will be will be good. So you, you probably could say that uh, some exposure in financials and energy might be a wise thing to do as well. So, again, it's, it's a developing situation. You have to keep your eye on, on what's happening. Um, I, I would say technology stocks are good. Utilities are good because of your fourth industrial revolution mega trend. But at the same time, maybe some exposure to energy and financials and definitely some exposure to gold is probably a smart thing to do. So, like always, if you, if you found this useful, please like, share and subscribe and what we would urge for and request for is comments so that we can engage with you and um, thanks for tuning in and see you next week